In today's coding exercise, we are asked to recreate Ruby's include method. And so essentially what we need to do, if you've never built this, is include is a very helpful method in the array class that allows you to pass a value and then it returns if a true or a false depending on if that value is included. So here we can take a example to see how this works. So if I have just a test array, basic array of integers, and I call array.include with a question mark, and then pass in five, just like this. If I run this code, now you'll see that this is going to return true. If I come down and I change it from instead of five to 500, and then run this code, then you'll see it returns false. So we are not going to be adding anything to this. I simply want to build out this and essentially clone this functionality because I think this would be a really good exercise for seeing exactly what's going to happen in behind the scenes. How is this possible that we can pass in a collection and then search through it? And the solution is actually relatively straightforward. You can see in our RSpec test that we are expected to have a does it have with a question mark method, but we're calling it directly on an array, which means first and foremost that we're going to open up the array class in order to make this possible. Once we have this open, we can say does it have, so def does it have with a question mark, and this is going to take a single argument of an element. You could call the argument anything you want. I'm just going to call it element because this is what we're searching for. Now inside of this, think about what we have to do in order to see if this is true or false. Remember, we have to return true or false. We can't simply return true if we find it and then fall, er, er, and then the array itself if we don't. That would not work and that uh, the test would fail. Let's first attack what we need to do if we find an element and then we can worry about the second part after that. So first and foremost I think the easiest way to approach this is to simply iterate over the collection. This is going to give us the ability to search through the collection one item at a time. So with our example down at the bottom, 2, 5, 104, this is going to go, it's going to say, okay, First, we're going to look at two, then we're going to look at five, and it's going to go through each one of those items, and then what we want to do is if the element, so if this argument that we're passing in up here, if this is found inside of the collection when we're iterating over it, then we simply want to return true. So nothing too crazy there in terms of functionality. So I'm going to say each do i, and i is a block variable, you could call it anything you want, and one thing just to kind of reiterate, because we opened up the array class, when I say each, I don't have to say, you know, some array.each. If you're used to Rails development, this syntax may look a little bit weird to you because I'm calling each, and it almost looks like I'm calling each on nothing. But because of the way Ruby works, especially in newer versions of Ruby, if you call a method like each, it assumes that you're calling it on self. And remember, self, when you have this type of setup where you're opening up the array, it's referring to the exact array that you're working on. So self, in the case of this example, self would be 2, 5, 104. If you had another example where it was 1, 80, 9, 104, then self would be representing this array right here. So that is just something, I know I've covered that a few times, but it's something that uh, depending on when you actually started watching these videos and when you start going through these exercises, if you see the syntax of just each all by itself, it may look a little bit confusing, but in all reality, it's actually quite straightforward because it's uh, Ruby gives you the ability to just skip writing self at all, and it assumes that if you call each, that you are referring to the array in question. So that is what we're doing there. 
and next I want to simply say return true if I, which is our block variable, so in other words, every time it iterates, it's gonna go, for our example at the bottom, it's gonna go to two, it's gonna go to five, 100. I is going to represent each one of those elements in, within each loop. So we're gonna say return true if I is equal to the element. So what that will do is it will return true, and with Ruby, whenever we force this re return statement, so whenever we say return true in the middle of a method, it is going to skip the rest of the method. It's gonna skip the uh, over, it's gonna skip going over the rest of the array, and also it's gonna skip anything else we put down here, which is very important for a reason I will go into shortly. So now let's try this. I'm gonna try array dot, does it have with a question mark? And let's see if this part works. So if I say look for 100, this returns true. So this is so far so good. Now, one thing though that is not good is watch what happens if I switch out 100 for 500. Now, we want this to return false, but what it actually does is it returns the array. Now, why does it return the array? It's because of the way that Ruby works with return statements for methods. Because we did not actually ever hit this return true, then Ruby simply returns the last item that was passed into it, which in this case is the array itself. So that is not the behavior that we want. We do not want to have our does it have method return either the uh, return true if it finds it, but then return the entire array if it doesn't. One kind of, it's along with Ruby's style guide, one very common pattern you'll see is whenever you have a method that return, or has a question mark at the very end of the method, like our does it have method, or like the include method, what the what developers are going to expect when they see these methods is that this is gonna return a Boolean value, which means that whether it's true or false, it's going to return one of those two items. These type of methods shouldn't return true in some cases and then return an array or a string or something like that in other cases because typically when you're running this type of method, you're usually calling it and saying if this, if you say for example, if this was a Rails application and you said, does it have this element? And if so, show this on the page. And if not, then you know, do something else. But if we say, does it have, and let's do a quick example of this, just because I, th I, I think it, it's not really clear until you start to build with it. So I'm going to copy what we have here. And let me actually just paste it in down below. So I'm gonna say, if array, does it have 500 or I'll start with the one we know is going to be true and I'm going to say puts it's included something like that and so now if we were to actually run this over here so if I say Ruby January 19th and it's going to print out it's included so everything there is working perfectly fine now switching back, if I do, if array does it have, and this one will go with 500. Now let's switch back, run this again, and it says it's included. What in the world, why is it doing that? And right here we would expect just intuitively that array does it have would return false, right? Because we asked, does it have this number? And we know it doesn't, we already tested it out and we can see right here in the array that it doesn't. And this kind of gets into a component of Ruby that can be a little bit confusing if you've never used it before. And that is that there are very few things in Ruby that are false. The really two of the main items that are false are gonna be either nil or they're going to be actual, the false Boolean value. So the only way that this works is if we return false in our method. So how exactly do we do that? We know that here we're returning true, 
And in order to return false, we simply have to say false at the very end. Because remember, if this returns true, then everything's done. So if this returns true, the method is going to skip this return statement here. And remember, because of the way Ruby works, just putting false is the same as saying return false right here. So now let's run this and let's run our, before we even run our tests, let's actually run the program and see if it prints that out or not. If I run it now, you can see it's working. Now, if we run, if array doesn't have 500, it no longer prints that out, which is exactly the behavior we're looking for. So I'm going to close that out and now let's run our RSpec test. So I'm gonna say RSpec January 19th, print that out and there you go. One example and zero failures. So this is how you can clone the include method in Ruby.